Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. This is the first episode of the new and improved photo critiques. Today we're going to look at a portfolio of images by Nick Dale. First, some quick house clean items. If you'd like me to critique your images, in the description below this video will be an email address. Just email me, let me know that you'd like me to take a look at your images, and I'll get back to you with instructions on how to get me those images and how I want them formatted and so on. Now, my initial thought was that I would do these photo critiques once a week. I was going to do them every Friday and I had mentioned I won't be able to do everyone's and I would pick a set of images to do once a week. But I received many portfolios from former students and from actual personal friends. So I didn't want this to seem biased in any way. So what I've done is I picked a portfolio at random and I picked Nick Dale's portfolio. But going through Nick Dale's images, I see that Nick Dale is really a professional's professional. These are great wildlife images, images that National Geographic would be envious of. There's very little for me here to be critical of. So I'm going to be basically praising each image as we go through them. So what I've decided to do is this week and this week only, I'm going to pick another set of images at random and I'm going to do another video tomorrow. Now hopefully there's be something there that I could be critical about, offer constructive criticism, criticism that will help everyone. So that's going to be special for this week only. We're going to do two videos. Now as far as Nick Dale's images, I mentioned they're excellent. He uh, shot them all in the wild. Uh, some might have been at wildlife reserves, but they're not like zoos. Um, the images are uh, shot with Nikon, either D800 or D810. I looked through the metadata and various Nikon lenses, and we'll talk about that as we go through them. Now, this first one of the bear and the salmon, I mean, it's perfectly framed. Uh, if you look over at the top left-hand corner, you can see that he used a 20 to 300 millimeter lens. I happen to own that lens. Those lenses are considered super zoom lenses where you could take them and shoot like a landscape image and shoot a wildlife image all in the same day with the same lens. They're very convenient. They're very light. They're not super large. The problem with that lens is it's not super sharp. It's not the sharpest lens there is, but Nick did a great job framing up the bear, getting this shot at the peak of action, uh, shot at ISO 400 F9, 1 16th of a second. So, like, su you know, the shutter speed was perfect, obviously, to catch the action. You have the water droplets and everything flying around the bear. Great shot. Next image, equally great. This uh, image of the flamingo. Um, obviously, it was a very bright, sunny day. You could see it was 1 1,000th of a second, F of 5.6, ISO of 64, 64. So, very low ISO relatively medium um, aperture, but still one one thousandth of a second. He used an 80 to 400 millimeter lens. Um, the key of shooting wildlife in bright sunshine is do your best to position yourself so that the sun, which is still is very high in the sky, right? Try to get it so it's slightly behind you. That way, as you can see on the flamingo's face, there's no harsh shadows. Many times people have emailed me images of great like wildlife action shots, but the sun was in a position where it really cast harsh dark, dark shadows across the face of the animal or across the body of the animal. And they're asking me if there's any way to like soften that shadow in Photoshop. You don't want to do that. You don't want to get yourself in that situation. So do your best to position yourself so that on these bright sunny days, so that sun is it hopefully slightly behind you. And then you'll, the, the animal you're going to be photographing, hopefully will be in a good position so that you could stand in that point or that spot and you won't have harsh shadows. Like there aren't any harsh shadows on this flamingo. Also, sometimes when you have the bright sunlight too, it kind of shifts colors a little bit. So converting to black and white is the solution to that. So Nick did a great job again on this shot. Uh, this shot, uh, this might be my favorite. It's it's up there. I like this shot. I'm, first of all, I, I like penguins. And it's an action shot, you know, kind of happy feet. The penguins jumping from ice flow to ice flow. Um, it's ISO 72, F of 5.6, 1 1,000th of a second. Again, it's pretty bright, obviously, because he's shooting at 1 1,000th of a second with a very low ISO. But 
it's more filtered light in this instance. So there probably was a very thin layering of clouds and it still is bright, but it's not like harsh shadows. So really nice shot. I like it. You can see the little water droplets coming off the penguin as he or she jumps from ice flow to ice, ice flow. And it's perfectly framed. Really nice shot. This one's a great shot of the elephant. Um, 85 millimeters. So Nick was pretty close to this elephant. It was 80 to 400 millimeter lens. It was ISO 140, F8, 1 500th of a second. So again, you're in Africa. It's a very bright, sunny, you know, very bright sun. But Nick positioned himself again, or had whoever was driving the vehicle he was probably in, positioned the vehicle so that the sun was slightly behind them. So you don't have really any super harsh dark shadows on the elephant. And it's an action shot too that adds to it. I mean, just taking a shot of an elephant standing there isn't as good as an elephant standing there doing something and throwing the, the dirt on his body or her body is what, you know, kind of helps the shot be kind of special compared to something else. Um, this is a beautiful shot of the tiger. Um, again, this, this is an 800 millimeter. So this is an 800 millimeter lens. ISO 400 at 5.6, one one thousandth of a second. So that kind of gives you an idea. It was brighter than it appears. So Nick did some stuff in post here to make it dark maybe to give kind of a ray of light on the face of the tiger, but that's okay. Um, he didn't alter the tiger at all. He just altered the lighting and it looks great. I mean, this is a great shot, the beautiful reflection. Uh, this is, if, if I took the shot, first of all, I'd be super proud of it. Second of all, this was, this would be one I definitely want to print and hang on the wall. Very well done. Uh, this is kind of a standard shot you take of a horse or in this case of a zebra. Uh, you know, you get close in on the eye of the animal. I like this one a lot because you got these kind of earth tones around the zebra's eye, and then you have these cool tones off in the background. This was, again, that 80 to 400 millimeter zoom lens at 400 millimeters, ISO 1100, f of 5.6, 1 250th of a second. It's a difficult shot to get because he was at 400 millimeters, and you know the zebra wasn't just standing still, allowing him to take a portrait. So... Very well done. You can see it's perfectly focused. Next shot. Again, this is another harsh light day, but you can see how there's no harsh shadows on the bird. So the sun was definitely a little bit, even though it was high in the sky, it was still a little bit behind Nick so that he was able to take the shot. Um, ISO 640 F8, one one thousandth of a second. Shutter speed's pretty perfect for the moving wings. You just have a tiny bit of blur on the wingtips. Kind of gives you the feel, the viewer the feel of the movement. But still, the eye and the, you know, dead grass, poor dead grasshopper in the beak of the bird are very, very sharp. So this is a great, great shot. Very well done. And the next one is the National Geographic shot, right? You know, the, uh, the gazelle running for her life or his life, I don't know, boy, girl, from um, the cheetah. Um, now, personal preference, I like this, but some people may want the cheetah to be in focus as well. Um, if you were taking video of this, you'd want it all in focus, probably, but I like it. I like that the um, cheetah is a little bit blurred. I just think it adds to kind of the mystique of it, the scariness of it, the, the thrilling um, chase of it all. Uh, this is a 800 millimeter lens, not the easiest thing to shoot with. Um, ISO 320 F8, 1 16th hundredth of a second. Perfect shutter speed to freeze the action. You can see there's no blur on the cheetah running, uh, no blur outside of the uh, depth of field blur on the um, cheetah itself, no blur on the gazelle. I don't know if I said cheetah over there, but whatever, you know what I meant. Perfect shot though. I really like it. Uh, this shot of the lion uh, is kind of interesting to me. I was looking at this for a while. It's an 800 millimeter lens, but he shot it at 1000 millimeters. And I'm not aware of a teleconverter that will make an 800 millimeter lens to 1000. Maybe Nick could email me and let me know what he used there. Um, ISO 280 F7.115 hundredth of a second. It looks like kind of a beam of light is hitting uh, the lion right here. But if you zoom in, there's kind of a weird light right here. It almost looks like a soft bot, like an octobox. I'm sure it isn't but that's what it kind of looks like. There's also kind of a vignette line going around the bottom 
of the um of the lion here so i mean there's some stuff done in post here to dramatize the effect of the beam of light hitting the lion's face it's still you know not to me i should specify my kind of philosophy about wildlife photography you should never do anything in post-processing that alters the look or the the um what the animal is you know you can't alter what the animal is so basically you know you're not going to take a zebra and remove its stripes and post and say this is a zebra that was totally white or totally black right you just can't do that and in this case he's not doing anything that's altering the look of the lion who that lion is just doing stuff with light and um still a nice shot i like it um if i didn't say it already yeah i said the specs up there right this is the last image, I think. This is a bee catcher. This, again, perfect shot. Here, this, this, the light, the sun, is perfectly straight up above. You can see how it's brighter on the back of the bird's head, the top of the bird's back. Um, just, you know, like that. There's softer shadow here. So that sun was really high. This, again, is that 800 millimeter lens. ISO 250, f5.6, 1640th of a second. So this is a great, great shot. Um, great action shot. Whenever you're trying to do any type of wildlife photography, always try your best to get the animal doing something. Like not just sitting there like this. I'm sure Nick has images of this bird just sitting on this stick without doing anything, right? But the shot of the bug, it looks like a fly, even though it's a bee catcher. Um, it It is just perfectly timed, right? So perfect. Um, here, you know, lion sitting there, but here you have the action. Here you have action. The bird's wings. The bird has the grasshopper in its mouth. This is, my, I mentioned, kind of a standard shot you get. Here's more of a tranquil feel mood shot, right? Here you have action with the elephant throwing the dirt on. Here you have action, the penguin jumping from ice flow to ice flow. Here's more of a mood kind of a shot, kind of an art shot, right? Here you have action. So try to get action if you can with wildlife shots just the animal doing something even if it's just a songbird in your backyard that's sitting on a stick if you could get it so that it's like beak is up in the air and it's singing it's better than it just kind of sitting there looking straight ahead so always try to get action also the last thing i want to talk about is his crop ratios if you look through here almost all of them are at two to three crop ratio um, which is a standard crop ratio it's his sensor ratio in his camera um so try to if you crop your images keep it to a standard ratio um there is an exception i think this one i think this is like more four to five still it's it's a crop ratio that has an equivalent paper if you ever want to print this so in this one here you could print an eight by ten a 16 by 20 borderless these here you could you know, eight by 10, 16 by 24, borderless. There's, there's frames made that you could buy off the shelf that will fit these prints. There's mats made that you could buy off the shelf that will uh, fit these prints. Too often I've seen photographers come in with these crazy crops, these just, you know, to make it look better. And it does look better. But then when they go to print it, they get these weird borders or they have to buy an expensive custom-made mat or expensive custom-made frame. So do what Nick does. <laughs> Try to keep it to standard crop ratios. Most often that's going to be two to three and four to five or five to four, however you want to word it. Um, very well done, though. This overall is a great portfolio. And um, as I mentioned, because it's such a good portfolio and I didn't have anything bad to say about anything, um, not that I want to say anything bad, but I think we all learn when I see something that I think might be a, f a fault and I say what you could do to correct it. That's how we all could learn from it. So, um, tomorrow again at random, I'll pick another portfolio and we'll do another video tomorrow. And then going forward, I'll do one a week. One thing I want to mention is, uh, some of you uploaded images to me that only have two or three, or I think in one case, one image, um, go through your those folders that I shared with you on Dropbox, make sure that you have 10 images. So if I pick you at random and you don't have 10 images in that folder, 
I won't be doing your critique. So I'll just pick another uh, photographer's portfolio at random uh, in those instances. So make sure you have 10 images in your folder. And leave them there. Just because I didn't pick you this week doesn't mean that you won't be picked next month. All right? So just leave them there. That doesn't mean you're out of the running because I picked Nick's today. All right? So uh, just leave them there. Um, if you change your mind, of course, you could take them away. And you don't even have to tell me. I'll just notice the folder's empty. All right? So thank you uh, to Nick for sharing his images with us. And thank you, everyone, for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.